And, uh, and I understand it's because people did that for him, yes. and he wants to do this for Troy and for other folks. But we really appreciate your courage being here. Thank you. saying thanks to the Troy Davis family who have stood strong. Yes. Somewhere I read what Dr. King said, two forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yes. Yet that scaffold sways the future. Yes. And behind the damn unknown stands God within the shadow, yes. keeping watch above his own. Yes. So I stand with you all today, yes. and I say to you all, Amnesty International and all the other groups, who have made it possible yes. for Troy Davis to continue to live. Yes. It's a great feeling that I feel that come through me yes. when I come here. Yes. As I see my mother and I see the people that try to help me. As I stand here with you all today, I'm not just a former person that was on death row. I'm a murder victim family member as well. I can remember when I was on California death row. My beloved new town, Lake Providence, Louisiana. When I was on death row, my mother wrote me a letter, and my, my brother became the police officer of that town. And she wrote and said, your uncle was murdered that raised you. And she said, we just want justice, not revenge and retaliation. And I understand now how my mother felt not only losing her brother, but had a young son who went to jail when he was 18 years old. He was 30 something when he got out. I understand it all. So today, when I stand with you all, I stand with you with a determination that won't quit. Because when I went to death row in California, it was young children, 16 and 17 years old. He said, Sue Job, we're gonna make a difference yes. and we're gonna get you out. Yes. And I said to myself on my way to death row, Get to the Dicey, December the 8th from California gas chamber. I said, what can some young children do against the power of the state? My friends who are here today, here I stand wounded by the blows of capital punishment, but not slain. So I rise tonight to fight with you all. I never thought that I would see this day, but those young students made it possible for me. I'm not just thankful for them getting me out. I'm thankful for being here so I can continue to fight to yes. end the, yes. Yes. the death penalty itself. Yes. Somewhere, mm -hmm. I read, it is not the best of things that is so important. Right. Somewhere, I heard, when I went to Carolina, like we say, a person who was scheduled to die, it was a 1,000 execution. And when I went there, it was murder victim family member said, Suja, would you come and take a stand with us? I said, how can I say no? And I went out, and I went to jail that night protesting the 1,000 execution. And as I stood there, the officer was pushing me back. He said, what you doing here? I said, I heard it's going to be a murder here tonight, and you come here to stop it. He said, you better get out of here. I refused and pushed me, and I went to the ground. Next thing you know, I was in jail. The next morning, I got out of jail and went on to South Carolina. I didn't stop in North. I went on to South Carolina and wrote just another execution. And there, I heard some of the most profound words that would be with me the rest of my days. It was a death road person that I never met, but I spent 10 days fighting for him. And he said in his final state, the most happiest of people don't necessarily have the best of things. They just make the best out of what comes their way. Happiness comes to those who fight, those who have struggled, and surely for those who have searched. For only they can appreciate the importance of those who have touched their lives. We can't go on well in life, America, until we overcome our past failures, parties, and disappointments. The most brightest of futures will always be based on the forgiveness and the forgotten past. My friends, I've lived in violence all my life, and I've been a part of violence. I went to prison when I was 18 years old, couldn't read or write, and I turned my whole life around, and I owe it to you all. So that's why I fight today. 
And I ask the people of Amnesty to never let the battle down on Charles Davis and none of us. Because you are the spirit of a great tomorrow. No matter how difficult the day may be or tomorrow may be coming, we got going to lose this case. We're going to fight for Troy Davis just like they fought for me. And I say to the Davis family, your son will be free. And we continue to struggle with the triple D when I was on death row. As a guy wrote me, and I can remember all the things when I was on death row because that's what made me survive. He sent me a little picture and he knew how much he meant to me. And on the back of it he said, two mountains that are far apart will never meet. But a dedicated people who are struggling for the same distinction will. Maintain psychic zones of liberation and we will remain that type of people. Right. I say to you, help us, help ourselves. Yes. Yes. I refuse to believe yes. that America is so tragically bound to the scarless midnight of capital punishment yes. that you can't see the bright daylight of life without it. Somewhere I read, what is the difference between a murderer and a system that murders mm -hmm. and the predetermined outcome is orchestrating murder? Mm -hmm. huh? When someone killed, when someone raped or robbed this robbery and acted against the robbery as a form of punishment? Of course not. But why would someone kill? We have to kill the food that killed this man. Right. I say to you all, we're going to build not just a new Georgia, we're going to build a new America. Yeah. And that America will be justice for all of its people, yes. not just some of them. As a young black man growing up in America, she's never been America for me. All right. But yet I pledge she will be. Not just for me, but for all these people. Yeah. Black, white, and brown. This is a rainbow. This is a new future that we must go forward. And as I close tonight, this evening, my friend, I'd like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. And most of all, I'd like to thank my mama for stitching by me. And thank to the Troy Davis family for being who they are yes. and sticking about Troy Davis. Yes. You're going to make a difference. Oh, yes. And I can tell you this. I told Martina when I was coming in, she said, you got to come. I said, I told you two years ago, long before it came popular. I said, if I have to walk to Atlanta to help you out, I said, I will. Yeah. I'm here today and I didn't have to walk. And I'm thankful. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all. Keep the faith and keep fighting. And understand, there's no sense in retaliatory violence. Mm. We have been using it for so long. The death penalty has been around for years and years, and we still have this violence. Mm -hmm. Long ago, we would have gave up on a system such as this mm -hmm. if it didn't give us no type of resources. Mm -hmm. We are only continuing to perpetuate mm -hmm. the whole cycle of violence. So as a former death row survivor, mm -hmm. as a man who spent 15 years of his life in prison, mm -hmm. and as a murder victim found them them, I say to you, don't speak stupid and loaded in Bible to make it right. And I have been loaded in Bible in my lifetime, but never again should I stoop and loaded in Bible to make it right. I'm going to do everything above, upon the board, and I want you all to join us in that beautiful fight. Thank you, Anderson. Thank you, ACLU, and all of my wonderful friends. As King would say, all the great pilots of this movement have made a great difference. But without the ground, that plane couldn't land. So I want to thank these people who are here today that are going to save Troy Davis. Long live the spirit to save Troy Davis.